Colossians 2 verse 12. For you were buried with Christ when you were baptized. So here's the uh, comparison of baptism, as we said, with a burial. With him you were raised to new life because you trusted the mighty power of God who raised Christ from the dead. So just like in Romans 6, uh, verse 3 and 4, he's comparing baptism with a burial and the burial of Christ. But then he goes on in verse 13, and he says, You were dead because of your sins, because of your sinful nature was not yet cut away. Then God made you alive with Christ, for he forgave all your sins. He canceled the record of the charges against us and took it away by nailing it to the cross. The devil came and he charged us, and the law said, guilty. And the Lord said, the wages of sin is death. Christ took that away, nailed it to the cross. In this way, he disarmed the spiritual rulers and authorities. He shamed them publicly by his victory over them at the cross. Who did he, uh, who did he disarm? It, to put it plainly, he disarmed, shamed, and defeated Satan, the satanic forces at the cross. Christ said, I saw Satan fall from heaven. He, he, he just, his influence was no longer there in the universe after the cross. Just as Christ was buried, raised from the dead, so you and I too were buried in baptism and raised to a new life. So, let's ask the question, what gets buried and what gets raised? Firstly, what gets buried when we are buried with Christ in baptism? Colossians 3, verse 5. Have a look there. We're still in Colossians. Chapter 3 and there, verse 5. Put to death. Here's something that's dying. What? Put to death, therefore, whatever things belong to your earthly nature. We have a heavenly nature or a spiritual nature. We also have an earthly nature, the nature of this earth. And then he mentions the qualities that belong to this earth. Sexual immorality impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Verse 6, because of these sins, the anger of God is coming. You used to do these things when your life was still when? Part of the world. But now is the time to get rid of what? Anger, rage, malicious behavior, slander, and dirty or abusive language? Don't lie to each other, for you have stripped off your old sinful nature and all its wicked deeds. These are the things that are buried in baptism. The old life is buried, Scripture says. And so those things I say goodbye to. Now sometimes, for those of you that have been on the walk of a long time, how many of you have been baptized, say, longer than uh, 40 years ago? See how many in this church? Whoa! That's a long time ago. And sometimes we forget. Our forgetry works. We become accustomed to our comfortable tradition we're in. We come to church, Sabbath school, everything works out fine, we go home. But then sometimes we fall into certain habits of sin. We don't call it sin. We just say, well, that's just a little addiction I have or a little this or that. Sometimes we need to remind ourselves. You know, I used to read these passages when I get to all these negative stuff, I skip them over. It's like in Galatians 5, 22, the fruits of the Spirit. But before that, he mentions the fruits of the flesh. I skip those over uh, because I say, oh, they don't apply to me. Sometimes we need to read the words sexual immorality. It doesn't happen in this church, right? Has it happened in the past? Ah, unfortunately, I've heard of those too. Impurity, lust, Evil desires, greed, idolatry. I need to hear these things sometimes. Anger, rage, malicious behavior. Ah, sometimes. What about anger? Is anger a sin, Lord? Anger? Anger is natural. I get upset sometimes, but is it possible that I lose my control over my anger? Malicious behavior, slander, character assassination, and dirty language. The, Hebrew, or the Greek has a connotation there of abusive language. Are you an abuser? 
No, Pastor, I don't abuse. Do you abuse your kids, your parents, your spouse in the way that you speak? Don't lie to each other. Don't hit him that hard. Don't lie to each other. Do we sometimes, are we a little dishonest sometimes? That's the old sinful nature. That gets buried. Just like the old pharaohs put all their sacred, you know, stuff, their special toys with them and their riches with them in their tomb. Paul says, you go put all your old life there. Bury it. Bury it. Now, what gets raised from the watery grave of baptism to be part of the new life and the new way of living? Colossians 3, and there from verse 10 on, put on a new nature, your new nature, and be renewed as you learn to know your Creator and become like Him. As you learn to know your Creator, the one who made you, and you become like Him. Him, be like Jesus, this is my song. We, uh, how am I becoming like him? In this new life, it doesn't matter if you are a Jew or a Gentile, circumcised, uncircumcised, barbaric, uncivilized, slave or free, whether you have a big back balance or a small little one, whether you're Caucasian, whether you're African-American, whether you are Asian or Indian, I'm an African American. It doesn't matter who you are. Jesus says, that does not matter. What is it that matters? My translation says, Christ is all that matters. Others says, Christ is all in all. Christ is all that matters. That's all that matters. And he lives in all of us. Since God, verse 12, chose you to be the holy people he loves, you must clothe yourselves with what? Here are the things that are raised from the water of baptism. You're raised to become like this. Take on tender-hearted mercy, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. These are tall orders, Patrick, right? Make allowance for each other's fault, faults and forgive one another Anyone who offends you, I know Christina's going to remind you of all these things, especially after, after that wedding day. Remember the Lord forgave you, so you must forgive others. Above all, clothe yourselves with what? Love, which binds us all together in perfect harmony, unity. And let the peace that comes from Christ rule in your hearts. Let peace be in charge. For as members of one body, we are called to live in peace and always be thankful. Verse 16, let the message about Christ and all its rich, richness fill your lives. Isn't that a beautiful way of saying it? Let the message of Christ, the message of Christ, in all its richness, fill your lives. What is the message of Jesus Christ? Come to me, all ye that are burdened, heavy laden with sin, and I will give you rest. Rest from what? Rest from your sin, rest from your burdens, rest from that. Let the message of Christ in all its richness fill your lives. Teach and counsel each other with all the wisdom he gives. Sing psalms and hymns and spiritual songs to God with thankful hearts. And whatever you do, whether in word or deed, whether you speak it or whether you do it, sing, uh, uh, do it in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, giving thanks to God the Father through him. Do it with a heart of gratitude. So, what gets buried? All those sins. What gets raised? The characteristics of Jesus Christ in your life. How does the Bible describe this transition from the old to the new? Ephesians 5. We're still there with Paul from Colossians, one book, two books earlier. Uh, Ephesians 5, verse 8 and 9. Ephesians 5, and verse 8 and 9, he says, For once you were full of darkness. That was when the lights were turned off. That was when the ships were, didn't know where to go and the rocks were get, <laughs> threateningly close by and the shipwreck was about to happen. Once you were full of darkness, but now you have the what? The light of the Lord. So live as people of the light. For this light within you produces only what is good and right and true. A well-known verse. 
uh, 1 Peter 2 verse 9. But you are not all like that, for you are a chosen people. You are royal priests, a holy nation, God's very own possession. As a result, you can show others the goodness of God, for he called you out of what? Darkness into his wonderful light. So there's a darkness and a light metaphor that scripture uses. When I'm buried, I leave my life of darkness. When I'm raised, I'm raised into a life of light. First John five, uh, one, first John one, verse five to seven. This is the message we heard from Jesus and now declare to you, God is light. Did Jesus say that somewhere? I am the light of the world. God is light, says first John five, and there is no darkness in him at all. So we are lying if we say we have fellowship with God, but go on living in spiritual darkness. I'm a Seventh-day Adventist Christian, but I'm dishonest, and I can't get over this problem. My anger, it's addiction, and I can't get over this hurting other people, and I can't get over this, or I can't get over that. This says, if we say we have fellowship with God and go on living in spiritual darkness, we are not practicing the truth. But if we are living in the light as God is in the light, then we have fellowship with each other and the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Amen? Amen. That is amazing. That is amazing. Isaiah 58 verse 10, here's a way to make your light shine and come out of darkness. Practical. Very practical. I know uh, Melva and Anna and others will smile when I read this scripture. Uh, Isaiah 58 verse 10, feed the hungry, help those in trouble, then your light will shine out from the darkness, and the darkness around you will be as bright as noon. Scripture says, if you do the deeds that Jesus did, if you help the poor, feed the hungry, your light will shine out of the darkness, dispel the darkness. Psalm 112 verse 4 Light shines in the darkness for the godly. They are generous, compassionate, and righteous. That's Psalm 112, verse 4. John 8, verse 12 says, Jesus spoke to the people and said, I am the light of the world. If you follow me, you won't have to walk in darkness because you will have the light that leads to life. John 9, verse 5, and I know I'm going quickly here because I... I catching up on our time. John 9 verse 5. But while I am here in the world, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. Now notice, Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And he says, while I'm here in this world, I'm the light. Why did he say that? He said, isn't he always the light of the world? But here he says in John 9 5, I found this intriguing little verse. While I'm here in the world, I'm the light of the world. Because in Matthew 5, verse 16, he says what? You are the light of the world. Do you see that? He says, you are the light of the world. He's basically saying, yeah, while I'm here in, in the world, I'm the light of the world. I've gone home, I've sent my comforter. Now you are my ambassadors. You are the lights to be the light of the world. In other words, we can't. We know we can't be the light of the world on our own only as we allow him to shine through us. So if we're looking at a lighthouse, it's like Christ is the light, but you and I are the little reflecting mirrors. We just reflect his light. And as we reflect his light, it becomes more and more, the light becomes stronger, right? It's, it's amazing. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. That's Matthew 5. Nor do they slight, uh, put a lamp, uh, light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all who are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your what? Your good behavior, your good deeds, your good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Ephesians 2.10 says, we are God's workmanship created in Christ Jesus to do what? Good works. We created to do good works, which God has prepared for us 
and advance to do. So we are all merely reflecting mirrors in his lighthouse. And when we all let his light reflect through us, then it becomes a very strong light for God's lighthouse that reaches far into the darkness to rescue the perishing. You and I are little reflecting mirrors. And the more we reflect, the more the light becomes. And can you imagine if you and I and everyone else had our little lamps and we went out into the world and every Christian around this globe let their light shine. Can you imagine what would happen? Can you imagine how the light would circle this globe? We are told that it will. And it's going to happen. But can you imagine if some of us are just kind of letting our light shine, let's say, like that, and, and like that? It just takes away the effect. And hopefully, not like that, or like that. Oh, brothers and sisters, man, wouldn't that be neat if every one of us would let our light so shine? People that you meet at Safeway, at Winco, people that you meet at your garage when you take your car in for servicing, people that you meet as you walk along the street, everyone, your neighbors, everyone, the easiest, it's not tough, it's not difficult. You just use these muscles here and just smile and just say, hi, how's your day going? And just be a light on a hilltop. Wouldn't that be an amazing, amazing, amazing thing? God is waiting for us to let our light shine. Let's uh, sing this chorus because it's new light. It's new life in Jesus Christ. Stand together, shall we? Thank you for new life in Jesus Christ. Jesus is all that matters. And may we truly live this light out as we go home from this place, as we go to our, through our task, daily task this week. May we truly find you, love you, allow you to take full control in our lives and shine out your life. And may we, through the good works that you have empowered us to live, give character to God. Give glory to God in Jesus' name.